Guys, it is cold, it's windy, um, not ideal filming conditions, but it's all right, it's all right, because you can't feel any of that, can you? You don't care how cold I am, do you? But um, behind me here, I've got a Vauxhall Astra VXR Arctic Edition. Arctic, that's a, uh, that was not planned at all, but yeah, it's a cool car. Yeah, uh, let's just get on with the intro, yeah? So if you sort of look up close, you'll see that my sort of nice Astra VXR Arctic Edition isn't actually that nice because you know it's got a bit of um, a bit of damage on the wheel there. As you sort of come round, let's go round there. Is there any more bumper damage? It's sort of cracked there. Oh, look, poppy appeal. See, that's a good sign. That means a good person owned this car. Poppy appeal thing there. Uh, as we come round, bit more sort of damage on the wheel there. There must be a rusty screw under there that's making that all dirty that will come off though so we'll clean that up bit of a mark on the side skirt there another curved wheel bit of a scuff on the rear arch uh damaged rear bumper there is a bit of damage here and there on this car uh but i'm kind of not bothered about that for some strange reason i'll, I'll explain as i go uh but let's quickly talk about the whole arctic edition thing so the astra vxr came out i think in 2006 and later on about 57 i think they facelifted them i say facelifted they they didn't actually facelift them they just threw a few more bits on like keyless start and keyless entry um this is probably i'm i'm not completely certain but 2011 i think was the the last year of manufacturing the vxr and the arctic edition i think was about 700 quid more from new than a normal vxr and there was uh, apparently only 500 of these made i don't i don't know if that's um 500 for the UK or 500 in total but either way it was a limited amount of cars so where they're different is um, they've got white paint I think it's called Olympic white um, and then they've got little black touches here and there so they've got a black grill black 19 inch wheels they come on it as standard um, black mirrors a black roof that's a nice touch as well and as we come around the back tinted rear windows again going for that black and white theme a black bar across the back so that's normally chrome on a normal vxr and then uh just usual vxr stuff we've got a, a center exit exhaust now um let's go for a little look on the inside as you come inside differences between a normal vxr and an arctic edition vxr is an arctic edition vxr comes standard with full leather um if you wanted full leather on your normal vxr you can get full leather but you've got to spec it as an option uh and they've got carbon dash inserts again proper carbon fiber that's a nice thing uh, but you don't actually get any more performance no power mods still 240 bhp uh, but so but mainly visually you get a better looking car right and back back in sort of 2011 almost 10 years ago now guys 2011 uh, white was a very popular color so what we'll do is because it is crazy windy i think my wind muff is doing a good job it's done one minute drum roll it's done 94,768 miles Ooh. ain't terrible mileage just below 100,000 miles so it's quite good for reset let me just flip the camera around wow it is so cold out there uh, but yeah, just under a hundred thousand miles. But where this car is quite special, I said this before in a video. Um, Bodywork you can pay and get repaired. It's not the end of a on end of the world if a car has body damage, right? You can get it repaired. It's not a problem. Wheels you can get them refurbed. Again, no problem. When a car's got like 10, 15, 20, 25 lots of owners, yeah, that's something you can't pay for you can't pay to have that number reduced it's impossible not that it really matters it doesn't actually matter that if a car's got like in excess of 20 owners but it's just not nice is it what this car's got going for it although it does look like a ropey piece of shit, and i agree with you if for those that are probably thinking cow what the bloody hell you bought it's proper ropey it is definitely a ropey example of an astro vxr arctic edition 
Uh, but where this is different to probably almost, not almost any other one, where it's a bit unique is it's had one owner from new. So zero former keepers on the logbook. And that's a nice thing, right? So it's done less than 100,000 miles. If you look on Auto Trader right now, I think the cheapest one up to 100,000 miles is 7,000 pounds. And we'll talk about the value of this one in a sec. But um, this one, once it's all tidied up, it's gonna be a nice example with less than, less than 100,000 miles and one owner from you. So what we'll do is uh, we'll do the usual stuff, hit the road, have a little bit of fun in the car, talk to you about my feelings on Vauxhall as a brand, because that's gonna be quite an interesting thing to talk about. And um, yeah, just general chit chat about VXRs, all right? So let's hit the road. is a press the sport button. I think if you press and hold the sport button, yeah, that turns the traction control off. And have some fun, have some fun with it. So I always say front wheel drive sports hatches, even there, you can notice the wheels. Skip out a little bit, yeah, but front wheel drive sports hatches are just so bloody fun, I love them manual gearbox, just so drivable, so easy to drive, so you don't have to have lots of power to have a great amount of fun. The 240 bhp and um, yeah, just a bit bit asbo, a bit savage, just a, a great thing to have fun in. The keys just dropped out of the pocket, a bit annoying. Uh, keyless keys, but love that, love that. It's a little, little bit of character on a, an old Vauxhall, but um, let's quickly talk about kind of my relationship with Vauxhall, I say relationship, or my thoughts on Vauxhall as a brand, because that's important, isn't it? I don't do a lot of filming on Vauxhalls. I rarely get one on the channel, and it's quite a special occasion today to have a VXR on it. So, um, when I was younger, like when I passed my test, it was kind of a bit of a divide in society. Not many people had German cars. I grew up in Luton, not many people had money, so German cars were kind of like a luxury in life, which not many people had and the divide really was you're either a Vauxhall person or a Ford person and I was a Vauxhall guy I used to love Vauxhalls as a kid and I say as a kid yeah as a kid I love Vauxhalls one of my favorite sports hatches of that time was a Mark II Astro GTE which is obviously the the previous car uh, or uh, further down the line even further uh, than this car so that was a Mark II Astro GTE they were a two litre red top 16 valve engine 150 bhp and it was actually the first car that me and leon ever bought and sold the first ever car that we ever bought and sold together was an astro gt we bought it in luton for about 300 quid had we kept it we worth a small fortune now i think we sold it for about 600 pounds we doubled our money on it and um yeah it's just a, like a little taste of the car trade back then following on from the mark ii astro gta you had the mark three astro gsi had the same engine in it as the, as the mark ii bit of a disappointment so the engine didn't improve still 150 bhp great engine don't get me wrong but you kind of see a new car and expect to expect it to have a, a new engine in it um lovely looking car great car of its time and i don't think i've ever had one something i probably will get my hands on at some point it's just a more of a modern looking thing than the mark ii the mark IV astra ooh. the mark IV torque steer <laughs> these cars are known for torque, torque steer the mark 4 so it went from a gt is a mark 2 um the mark 3 was a gsi and then the mark 4 was also a gsi and that was a 2 liter 16 valve turbo right so that was when they began putting, putting turbos on these cars and um it's funny that it gives you, I think two wheel drive cars seem to give you a sort of a, a false perception of how quick a car is. Like this feels like a proper quick car. I, I mentioned that a lot about, like, I think I've recently done a video on a Cooper S, said it about that as well. But um, yeah, they put a turbo on the Mark IV, great car. For some reason it wasn't massively popular. Um, don't know why, quite a cool car. Never had one, but I have driven one. They drive really well. And then later on in 2006, they brought out the Astra VXR. So this was a top of the range car. And um, yeah, I remember going to Vauxhall at that point in time. And uh, there was an Arden Blue Astra VXR sat there in the showroom next to a Vauxhall Vivaro. And I looked at the Vivaro. I was in the building trade at the time. 
And I thought, you know what, that's my perfect two car driveway. A Vauxhall Vivaro for work and an Astra VXR for my sort of fun at the weekend. Um, but yeah, that's sort of, I love Vauxhalls. The Astra was like the, the sort of the golf of the Vauxhall world. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm a big Vauxhall fan because I've kind of moved on in time, but I've always liked a Vauxhall. Now let's talk about from a car trading point of view because a lot of people say to me, oh, I see in the comments, why would you buy that? You're an idiot, why have you bought that car for? It's got this, it's got that. A lot of people love to point out the faults and I notice people are like that in general in life. And if you're that type of person, what you find yourself actually doing is not seeing the qualities in things and it stops you from moving forward. And my attitude towards cars, towards life, it's always been, let's, look, let's find good in this, let's find the best in this, let's make good of it and try and make something work with what we've got. And every every car I buy, you know, you, I've done a video on the S4 recently. Uh, just everything, I can't, not, nothing's really springing to mind. But a lot of the cars, the old Range Rover that broke down, as much as I laugh about it, it ain't, or as much as it is a problem, it ain't really a problem, is it? Because that's my mindset. I buy cars like that all the time and started off with one car and I've got close to 200 cars now. So you keep building, keep working, keep that mindset strong, keep seeing the qualities, the positives, and have a positive outlook on not just your, your, what you're doing at work, but everything in life, and you will 100% move forward. Don't rule things out because, like this car, for example, it's done like 90 odd thousand miles, it's got loads of body damage, oh, has it been looked after? Oh, seriously, man, just get on with it, buy cars, do what you gotta do. Whether you're doing car trading, bloody, I used to be a locksmith, whatever it is you're doing, yeah, go for it, just bloody do it. Stop making excuses, be positive, and go and crack on and earn some money, all right? But yeah, so from a car trading point of view, this car, what I'm gonna do is the cheapest one in the country is up for 7,000 pounds. I think what I'm gonna do is put it up for, it needs about a thousand pounds worth of prep. Agree, like, I agree on that, do we agree on that? Um, you can't really respond to me for a camera, can you? But it needs about a thousand pounds worth of prep, so I'm gonna advertise it maybe 1,500 to two grand less than the cheapest one in the country. That means someone can buy this car, tidy it up, earn money on it, and have some fun in it in the meantime. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing to it. I'm not gonna tidy it up myself because I've been buying too many project project cars lately, um, which is getting offered absolutely loads at the minute. So my bodywork guy, Jason, paintbox space, shout out to him. He's flat out busy, he can't keep up with all the work. Um, so I'm just gonna sell it, small margin, move it on, job done. Have I done enough talking? I think I've done enough talking, didn't I? My face is bright red now because I've been out in the cold filming. Shit, man, the heating's hot in this car. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of been a bit of a car trade related video more than it is an Astra VXR video, but they're a cool car. Astra VXRs in general start at about three, three and a half grand, I think. Like for the earlier models, like a 56 or something like that. Uh, they're a great car. If you want to have some cheap, a cheap bit of fun, go and get yourself an Astra VXR, all right? But, um, yeah, I'm going to leave it as that. Thanks very much for watching. I appreciate your time. I say it all the time. Appreciate it a lot. But if you did like the video, definitely just give me a like. Yeah, hit that bloody like button. It does me a favor. Hit subscribe if you're new to my channel for a new video every Wednesday and Sunday at six o'clock. Guaranteed on time. I don't mess around. I'm super reliable. And uh, yeah, that's it. Give me a follow on Instagram as well, at Calvin's Car Diary. And um, I'll see you in my next video, all right? Bye. In the next episode of Diary of Car Trader, I do a five hour train journey to Plymouth to buy a car that's been on my bucket list for ages. It's a car that I know a lot of you are gonna like. To find out what that car is, make sure you subscribe for the video that's going live on Sunday at six o'clock.